In this video, we are going to talk about adjusting for overcounting. So I want to talk about this with an example, which says, how many distinct ways are there to rearrange the letters in the word, in part A, the word is food. So I want to begin with being careful about something. And the answer is not simply what we get if we rearrange, if we count all the ways to just rearrange four objects, which is because there's four letters here. So the number of ways to rearrange four letters is four times three times two times one or four factorial. So multiplying that out, we get 24. So why is that? Why is this not just the right answer? It has to do with the fact that the O's, there's two O's in this word, and the O's are identical. So switching their order doesn't produce a new rearrangement. So, for example, e.g., we can see this if we label the O's with subscripts. So if we had F, and then for the first O, if I wrote O1, and for the second O, if I wrote O2, and then D, if we swap the two O's here, that's the same word, because the two O's don't make a difference in terms of what the word looks like. This should be the same as if I did F, and then put the second O first, and then I did O1, and then D. But when I counted it how we initially did, as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, this says that the order in which we place the O's matters. So this counts those. By those, I mean F01O2D and F02O1D. Counts those as different. So right now, it's counting F01. It's counting the word food twice. Because if I were to switch the O's, uh, it's actually the same word, but doing 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is counting that as a different word. So as a result, we are overcounting. Okay, so actually, I want to make a note of this next. So here's an important note, which is for each for each rearrangement of these letters, like if I were to do O, D, O, F, for each rearrangement, there are two ways to permute the O's. Either we could keep them in the order that they're in, or we could switch them that are actually identical. For every single rearrangement, there's two ways to permute the O's that are identical. And as a result of that, we overcount the true answer by a factor of two. We're actually counting every single word twice. So we can fix that by dividing by 2, by dividing by 2. So even though we overcounted and that's not, that's not good, we're happy because there's a quick fix. We just divide by 2 and doing that we are going to get an answer. We get our initial count which was 4 factorial, that was too high. We divide it by 2. 
one thing I want to notice about this is 2. In this case, this is the same thing as 2 factorial. If I really wanted to be technical about this, there's two factorial ways. Two factorial ways to permute two objects. So when I write 2 here, this is just what 2 factorial ends up being. 2 factorial is 2. Okay, so 4 factorial is 24. Divide that by 2, and I get 12. So there are 12 distinct ways to rearrange the letters in the word food. All right, so let's box this. All right, let's look at one more example. So part B. So I'm going to do the same thing, but for the word shredded this time. So I want to begin by pausing, giving you all the opportunity to try this question on your own. So this time, pause the video for about three minutes to try this question on your own first. Four, three, two, one, pause the video. Pause it for three minutes to try this question. That may not be enough time to finish the problem, but I really want you to be thinking about what are the key steps? How do I begin? All right, so hopefully you've done that. Hopefully you've paused the video for about three minutes to try this question. Let's talk about it together. So I am gonna, just like we did before, think about what happens if we label each repeated letter with subscripts. Ooh, let's write that better, with subscripts. Okay, so we have S, H, R, and then we have two different E's. So the first E, I'll label as E1. I'll leave a little bit of space, and then I'll put E2 for the second E. And then for the Ds, I'll label them with subscripts, D1, D2, and D3. There's three Ds. All right, so overall here, we have eight letters. So initially, there's eight factorial ways to rearrange these letters, these letters, but this is going to overcount. And the reason why is for each such rearrangement of these letters, for each such rearrangement, we can permute the E's And there's two E's, so we can permute them in two factorial, which is two ways. So once, I've, once I have an arrangement, like the one that I have right now, which is just straight up the word shredded, there's two factorial ways to permute the E's. Either we keep them in the same order that they're in, or we swap their order. And now let's do the D's, and also we can permute the D's in, once I pick uh, an arrangement of the, the letters like this, I can permute the D's because there's three of them in three factorial, which is six ways. So for example, with this word that I have in this order, notice, for, for example, this is the same as if I were to write S H R, and then I were to put the second E, and then I were to put the first E later, and then let's switch the order of the Ds. Let's say I did D3, and then I did D1, and then D2. This is actually the exact same word as the one above because the order in which I place the Es doesn't matter, shouldn't matter, and the order in which I place the Ds also should not matter. So doing eight factorial is going to overcount because it counts. Uh, things like this other shredded that I just wrote down as being different from the first shredded that I wrote up above. So we are going to fix that overcounting, just like we did in part A, by dividing. We're going to divide by 2 factorial and 
by 3 factorial to fix the overcounting. So because of the two e's, we end up overcounting by 2 factorial, by a factor of 2 factorial. And then because of the 3 d's, we end up overcounting by a factor of 3 factorial. So we got to divide by both to fix it. And that gives us that the number of rearrangements equals 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial, which if we work it out ends up being 3,360. And that's our answer. All right, so in terms of our goals for the section, we finished our last goal, which is to recognize when and how to adjust for overcounting. So this issue of overcounting is something that we're going to see in the next section as well, section 2.3 on combinations.